Problems tomorrow, everybody. I know I'm excited. Well, don't forget the pretzels today, the real highlight of the week. Of course. We've got a lot to share this week, so without further ado, Wave, Wave TV, TV starts, starts now. You wear those shoes and I will wear that dress. Oh, kiss me beneath the milky twilight. Lead me out on the moon. Lift your lift your open hand. Strike up the band and make the fireflies dance. Silver moon sparkling. So kiss me. A recent tragedy occurred at the Chick-fil-A in Azalea Square. Sophie Hoff tells us about the event and its repercussions. Last month, an incident occurred near the Chick-fil-A parking lot on Main Street involving an off-duty officer and a North Carolina man. Anthony DeLustro, now a former police officer, is being charged with murder after shooting 39-year-old Michael O'Neill. O'Neill's death and Lester's arrest was a result of an argument between both men, which quickly became violent. O'Neill was not armed at any point of the dispute. This caused establishments near the crime scene to close, as well as the road near it. It is unclear if one of might cause this fight. More information for this case will be released soon. Reporting for Wave TV, I'm Sophia Hoff. Officer Delustro has been currently denied bond and will be awaiting trial on June 14th. For some of our new voters, Ava Grafton has a few important election dates. Greetings, my fellow Green Wave. With every passing primary, election season draws closer and closer. We here at Wave TV understand that all the different dates, caucuses, and elections this whole process involves can be confusing. So to prepare our upperclassmen for their first presidential race, let's go through every important date of the 2024 election. If you plan on voting in this election, make sure to get your voter's registration by October 6, 2024. You can do this online at sevotes.gov. On July 25th, the Republican National Convention will convene in Milwaukee where state delegates will vote to confirm their party's candidate for president. About a month later, the Democratic National Convention will be held in Chicago on August 19th. Once each party officially declares their candidate, the true election season will begin. On September 16th, the first presidential debate of the season will convene in San Marcos, Texas. The vice presidential debate will take place on September 25th in Easton, Pennsylvania. Both events will be available to watch live. On November 5th, the 2024 presidential election will take place. For those of you who will still be in school, this means a free day off. The anticipated winner should be announced within 24 hours of the election. Finally, on December 17th, state electors will gather to cast their official votes for president, with the winner being declared president-elect. The inauguration of the president will occur on January 20th, 2025. Make sure to stay informed on the candidates and their policy so you can make an educated decision for your ballot. Reporting for Wave TV, I'm Ava Grafton. Evelyn Mahaffey shines a light on a recent field trip for culinary. Last week, a group of Chef Green's culinary students visited Stars and Strikes to explore the ins and outs of a multi-use facility. This trip was an opportunity for many students to see how service and food play a role in facilities like Stars and Strikes, which is both an entertainment facility and a restaurant. While culinary classes mainly focus on the history and learning how to actually make desserts and cuisines, a major part of the class is learning about how a restaurant and business works. Without the knowledge behind a business, students can't apply their cooking skills. Reporting from Wave TV, I'm Evelyn Mahaffey. Speaking of strikes, seasons are ending for spring sports. Mason Faircloth recaps the ending plays. The spring sports of this year are coming to a conclusion, and Wave TV is here to catch you up on the action. Starting out, the Green Wave boys soccer team has a 7-10-1 record with a single tie on the year. A 4-0 winning install and another 5-1 victory have highlighted their seasons. The women's team has had a bit more success, posting a 5-5 record through 10 games, with their best game coming against Spring Valley being a 4-2 score in favor of the Wave. Next up, our very own baseball team holds a 12-9 win ratio, putting them at 18th in South Carolina. With two home runs, seven RBIs, and a .531 batting average, P.J. Morlando has hit the ground running and hit the ball even better. The Lady Green Wave softball team is undefeated through 19, ranking number one in the 5A Region 7 and number 10 nationally, with their best games being a 17-0 blowout against Timberland and a 13-0 score versus the rivaling school Ashley Ridge. That's the new facts and updates on the school sports and its success. Reporting for Wave TV, I'm Mason Faircloth. Great job to all of our Somerville sports teams for a phenomenal spring. And with spring ending, summer on the way, and school out of the picture, many of us are wondering what's next. Thankfully, there's plenty of summer jobs students can get while they're out. Alex Herman tells us more. Are you thinking of getting a summer job? Well, do I have the solution for you. What about an arcade attendant at Stars and Strikes? A part-time or full-time job, $10 to $15 an hour. 
Your job will be to assist customers through the arcade, laser tag, and bumper cars. Well, if arcades are not for you, then maybe a bakery clerk at Lowe's in Fort Boulevard, a part-time job for $14 an hour. Benefits include a flexible schedule. Your responsibilities include a friendly tone to customers, preparing the products for sale, and maintaining product level and quality. Or how about being a team member at King Smoothie in State Road Suite in Somerville? It is a part-time job for $10 an hour. Benefits include an employee discount and flexible schedule. Your job is to blend smoothies, properly prepare fruit, and greet everyone with a smile. If any of these jobs are not your style, then head to Indeed.com or download the app for other jobs. Reporting for Wade TV, I'm Alex Freeman. Okay. Maybe you ought to look in one of those, Austin. I might if I have the time for it. <laughs> Another fun use of your time would be the Caribbean night at the Ashley River Park where the steel band is playing. John Buckner brings us more info. Somerville High School's own performing arts programs are getting ready for or have already performed their final acts for the school year. The Green Wave Steel Band is getting ready for their Caribbean Fest. It started out as an event that we started here at Somerville High School. This year we've expanded it to six bands in DD2. We have 12 seniors graduating this year. It's always a happy and a sad time. We're so happy to celebrate their achievements. It's going to be over a two-day period at the Ashley River Park Pavilion on May 3rd and 4th, and we hope you'll be there. Can't wait to check that out. Seems like a pretty good time. Speaking of time, it's time for a movie report. After the recent CinemaCon, Stan Standridge and Dagan Faith share with us some of the exciting reveals. With this year's CinemaCon, there are a plethora of new announcements, trailers, and surprises in the world of movies. On the first day of the convention, Warner Brothers announced Joker, fully ado, with Joaquin Phoenix back as the Joker, alongside Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn, as well as Furiosa, a Mad Max saga, Mickey 17, and Beetlejuice Beetlejuice, set years after the original movie. For horror fans, as Shonda Night Shyamalan, the daughter of horror filmmaker M. Night Shyamalan, is directing The Watchers, a supernatural horror film based off of a book by A.M. Shine with the same name. Starting off day two, we have the Lionsgate panel. Fresh off of the Barbie hype, Margot Robbie was announced to be producing a live-action Monopoly movie that's been in production hell for years now. It isn't the only movie getting a new life breathed into it, though. Jason Blum took the stage and announced that Blumhouse and Lionsgate would be partnering to reboot classic horror movies, starting with The Blair Witch Project. Finally, the first bits of footage were shown from the Michael Jackson biopic starring Jafar Jackson, Michael's nephew. Ending day two, Universal showcased the Five Nights at Freddy's sequel, Despicable Me 4, after almost seven years since the previous one, and a movie adaptation of the Broadway musical Wicked, as well as The Bike Riders, and the Storm Chaser for the Year, Twisters. Paramount opened day three with their panel, starting by announcing a new Star Trek movie as well as an untitled comedy being produced by Kendrick Lamar and the creators of South Park. The title and logo for the new Spongebob movie was also revealed, being named the Spongebob movie Search for Square Pants. Horror fans seem to be getting well fed this year as a reboot of Scary Movie is in the works. Clips from the Transformers 1, Sonic the Hedgehog 3, Smile 2, and Gladiator 2 were also shown throughout the panel. And finally, closing out day three, Disney announced Deadpool and Wolverine, a major superhero team up for the year, and Captain America Brave New World. Outside of the Marvel franchise, they also announced the espionage action thriller, The Amateur, and a couple of sequels including Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, Alien Romulus, and Moana 2, as well as Mufasa the Lion King, a prequel to the first movie. A lot of familiar titles this year. I think so. What was your favorite panel? Universal. Mine has to be Paramount, honestly. What do you think? Go to the Wave TV Instagram and vote on the poll. Reporting for Wave TV, I'm Dagan Faith. And I'm Stan Sandridge. Maybe once you have a job, you can afford seeing all those interesting new movies. Well, I'll be just fine watching all these one-chip challenges. Did you know Solomon Malat is doing a one-chip challenge? Wait, really? Yeah, let's check it out. Howdy, Somerville. It's Solomon. And I got a very special guest today. My name's Luca Bryant. I'm sure you guys remember two weeks ago when I did that segment about the jalapenos. Well, today... We're, we're getting a little silly. We got these one chip challenges, which I'm sure you remember killed some people a few like last year, and we're gonna take them. This isn't gonna be very fun. This thing's oh damn. Poop brown. All right. Okay. Three, two, one. Pink. I've got an easy chip. I can't do anymore. I can't, oh, I can't do it no more. I know, I got it. I hate it so much, dude. It hurts so bad. Oh, 
hurts. It hurts. Luca, I think I'm gonna die. My mouth. That's why my eyes are burning. What does it taste? What does it taste like? Like I had dug into the trash can of a third shut up of a third grade classroom, grabbed the like three kids worth of vomit in there, put it in my mouth. Oh great heaven. Oh god. This is oh my Zooey Mom Vomit. Melting Toy TV, I'm Solomon Milan. I'm Luca Bryant. Yeah, I think I could do it too. Oh, I'm sure you could. You think you could? I never said that. Well, everyone, that's all for this week. I'm Max Right, And I'm Austin Day. You stay classy, Somerville. And have a great weekend.